I just got to say what we're doing or not. There's no need to go into the Underrealm. Would you be silent, Dwarf? There's absolutely no reason to be worried. By all that is holy, what is that thing? What's going on in this room? Because I think there are some fascinating ramifications here for the future. Hey, what up, boys? Today, we're discussing the lore, aesthetics, and benefits of the most interesting race Ashes of Creation has to offer, the Tulma. On top of that, I'll be doing my best to compare them to other similar races in our currently popular MMOs. However, the Tulna are fairly unique, so prepare again like the orc video for some loose fitting examples. If you're discovering my channel through this video, here's a link for the general race overview in the top corner which goes over all the races in less than 7 minutes. And feel free to subscribe whilst you're at it. Let's begin shall we? So, the Tulnar are a race that was added to the game's overall scope as a result of the 1.75 million kickstarter goal we reached back in 2017, and later in the same year as a playable race because of the 2.5 million goal that was also achieved. And by god was it an amazing goal to reach because it opens up a huge amount of lore and diversity for playable races. However, be aware that the Tulnar will not be available for the Alpha 1 as they require a ton of extra development, and I'll be explaining why later in the video. On that note, bear in mind that a lot of this is just me piecing together what we've heard over the years. I'll be using my knowledge of other MMOs to try and decide what I think will be happening with this unique race. If you guys disagree, that's okay. It's a topic for discussion, so let me know in the comments what your take on the Tulnar is. So what are these Tulnar then? Get on with it, Nark! Okay, okay, calm down. I know you're excited, so let's get straight into it. The Tulnar means the Forgotten. When the Great Calamity dawned and ravaged the planet, the four major races, the Alar Humans, Dunzenkel Dwarfs, Pyrian Elves and Kyvek Orcs, retreated to Sanctus through the Magical Way Gates. However, the ones who did not make it were trapped on Vera, at the mercy of the Ancients destroying and exploiting their world. These stragglers were no match for the Ancients and had no choice but to retreat into the planet's crust deep below, hidden from the ancient eyes, Forgotten. Over the millennia, as the Forgotten built their civilization and survived the harsh environment of the Underrealm, they evolved. These Tulnar are a mix of the four parent races but have acquired the traits of various other lesser beings of Vera, primarily humanoid in shape. They also have reptilian and mammalian aesthetics added into their customization. Speaking of the devil, the Tulnar do not have two major subraces to choose from. Instead, when you create your Tulnar, I expect you will be given a choice of one of the four parent race templates to work with an elf, a human, an orc, and a dwarf. This will determine the skeleton your character model uses to perform attacks and emotes. This isn't confirmed however, just speculation on my part. Anyway, because of the nature of some of the possible limbs, I expect even these will require some custom rigging on Intrepid's end. Once you've chosen your base and gender, from that point you will likely be given a plethora of options available to further customise your Tulna to your liking. Using three separate bars of customization, tweaking between the three will change how the overall aesthetic of your Tulnar will turn out. Reptilian options will likely follow similar traits to that of the Argonians we have in Elder Scrolls Online, with deep, dark, scaly skin colours and patterns across your body, offering dragon-like spikes across various parts and customising the length of your tail. Like we see in World of Warcraft's Worgen and Guild Wars 2's Char, fur and mammal-like features will be available too, shaping your limbs to more suit an animal-like stance, such as inverted knee joints 
and a pig snout or vicious lion and wolf muzzles, really allowing for some nice diversity between just the Tornar themselves. When you create your character in Ashes of Creation, the zone you start at is one of the four waygates that the parent races used to escape through. But the Tornar didn't escape through a waygate, so where do they start? Well, the Tornar also have their own starting zone in the Underrealm. However, Stephen has said that you are able to start wherever you want, be you Dwarf, Elf, or Tornar. He doesn't want you not being able to play with your friends from the get-go just because of your race. So, the Underrealm. What is this dangerous place you speak of? Can't be that dangerous if a level 1 can start there. Well, yes, that's true, but I expect the Tulnar starting zone will be fairly close to the surface, basically starting you in a similar place to everybody else. Possibly with the story being your tunnels collapsed and now you cannot get back to your home. Some cop-out story like that, but uh, much more badass, I hope. The Underrealm is a place full of exotic fauna and flora, beautiful mushrooms of bright luminous colour. There's a few places I can think of that replicate this zone in other MMOs. For example, Blackreach from Elder Scrolls Online and Deep Home in World of Warcraft. If you guys know of any other areas that other MMOs kind of replicate the Underrealm in, let me know in the comments. Anyway, what I want to focus on here is not ESO related, but Skyrim instead, as the Blackreach in Skyrim is home to the Falmer, whose aesthetic will closely match what we'll be getting from the Tulnar, I expect using bone and chitin for their buildings and armour. Being a race that has lived underground for millennia because of the Great Calamity, feels appropriate that they would have abandoned their old ways of crafting armour and weapons, using forge and anvil, instead turning to stitching and carving using materials taken from the inhabitants of the deep. As for mounts, it only makes sense for them to be riding on reptilian dinosaur-like creatures to help them traverse the rocky terrain with ease. Or perhaps giant insects tamed and equipped with chitin saddles for more of a savage look. After all, the Tulnar are the least concerned with ornate designs and sigils. I expect the Tulnar will be a widely popular race, offering much more customization than the other four, but with a much more primal tribal aesthetic that other races have developed from. So obviously the Tulnar is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. As a Tulnar node grows into its higher level stages, great walls of bone will emerge, protecting the hatcheries and incubation chambers that house their young. The racial augments are likely to follow similar traits the Argonians have in Elder Scrolls lore, giving resistances to poisons and offer certain bonuses like increased breath underwater. Overall, I'm very excited for the Tulnar, and I actually plan to main one when it comes to us in the Alpha 2. If everything plans out the way I explained in the video, an Orc Dragonkin will be my race of choice. And that pretty much covers it for the Tulnar in Ashes of Creation. Next up is a new series starting, so make sure you share my content between your friends and help the channel grow as we close in on the Alpha 1. If you enjoyed my video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe if you haven't already, as I upload a video every two days. I want to thank the ones who commented on the last video. You guys are the best and I really appreciate your support. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.